I am ready to add bracing to the sides. First, I set up something to hang the sides from, preferably close to eye level. I keep a long board padded with cork on one end for this. I add a cam clamp as a backstop and hang the sides. For cutting side braces, I use a strip of mahogany that is about four by eight millimeters. Remember that I cut the sides to four and a quarter inches in width before thicknessing and bending? I like to use the off cut from cutting the sides to width for the side braces, but you can really use any hardwood scrap that you have around the shop. I like to have five braces on each side. I position two braces in the flat areas on both sides of the waist. The other three braces are simply spaced evenly off of the two braces near the waist. So now I have two in the lower bout. And finally, one more in the upper bout. I don't use predetermined measurements to locate the braces. This is largely because the earlier operation of hand bending the sides is an intrinsically organic and imprecise operation. For example, the peak of the waist may be slightly to one side of its location on the mold. I simply space the braces out relatively even by eye, making sure that I have two on the flat areas surrounding the waist, two in the lower bout, and one in the upper bout. Let's start with one of the waist braces. I hold the wood strip in place and mark where I should cut so that the brace will fit between the kerfing. I cut just outside the line so that I can sand down to my final fit. A tight fit between the brace and the kerfing is important. I check the fit and make a mental note of how much material I need to remove. Before we sand it to fit, let's take care of the show face. For aesthetics, I round the edges of the show face. Once that looks good, I smooth the show face to 220 grit. As a final touch, I bevel the ends so that the brace appears to slope down to meet the kerfing. These are things that I do because I think it looks good. I flatten and smooth the mating surface of the brace to 220 grit. Finally, I sand the end of the brace to fit. There is a little bit of dried glue in the corner that is obstructing the fit. Rather than trying to remove the glue and make a perfectly square inside corner, it is easier to simply round over the inside edge of the brace ends. 
the rounded edge will not come in contact with the dried glue and I can get a tight fit. I apply glue to the mating surface of the brace. And I also like to add a little dab of glue to the ends of the brace where it will meet the kerfing. I slide the brace in the direction that the sides taper so that the brace wedges firmly in place between the kerfing. If the brace is off its intended mark by a little bit, that is okay as long as the fit is snug. Two spring clamps maintain pressure. I like to cut, shape, and glue the braces one by one, rather than cutting them all at once and then gluing. It's easier to keep track of what goes where. So once again, I mark the brace. Cut just outside the line. Round the edges of the show face. Bevel the ends of the show face. Flatten and smooth the mating face to 220 grit. And slightly round the ends, if necessary. Then I sand the ends to fit. And I glue in place with two spring clamps. After one side is complete, I adjust the way the sides are hanging for better access to the other side, and then I glue five more braces. Okay, these are done. I let these sit for at least 45 minutes before removing the clamps. Mm -hmm.